Hello, hello. We're back again. It's Lauren and Lisa. Art is moving. Part of our taking our break symposium. This year, the theme is art as a lifeline. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. Well, we are so excited today. We have on this beautiful Art as a Lifeline Symposium Day, we have Darren Rocket. And if you want to introduce yourself, Darren, and really tell us um, who you are and what's your passion and what are you doing um, to create this Art as a Lifeline? So um, I'm a clinical social worker at the Bangor Vet Center. And um, vet centers are a national program. We're um, a little known secret of the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, and the, the vet centers started, oh gosh, in late 70s um, when Vietnam veterans came home from the war. And um, they went to the VA for help and the the atmosphere at the VA was really similar to what it was in the country. Um, there was a lot of, um, you know, get a job, get a haircut, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, and so this climate of distrust was created between veterans and big VA. And um, and Vietnam veterans were, you know, struggling. Um, there was a lot of um, disconnect between them and, um, and, and their communities. Um, a lot of, you know, blaming the warrior uh, the, the ones who most of them, you know, had been drafted and blaming them for um, for what happened in the war. So it really created a, um, a lot of issues with readjustment. And there's a lot of clarity that um, that Vietnam veterans wanted and deserved to have service um, and support and care um, and um, and that it needed to be in an environment that was kind of separate from VA. So, um, so they created vet centers and, um, and what they did was they, in the beginning, it was all about Vietnam veterans providing a lot of peer support for other Vietnam veterans coming home. Over time, the mission expanded um, with Bosnia and the first Gulf War. There were new veterans coming home with readjustment issues and, um, and they said, well, um, these vet centers seem to be good with this readjustment stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So they brought them in. And, um, and then when we expanded our mandate to include people who had been in um, the Persian Gulf or been in Bosnia, um, it was written in such a way that it was anyone who had, had um, served in a war zone, which then opened our doors to World War II and Korean War vets. Mm -hmm. And then when Afghanistan and Iraq um, happened, mm -hmm. those veterans were coming in too. Um, in 2000, they, they expanded again. Um, knowing seeing that we were really spending a lot of time working with people in areas where they had experienced trauma in their lives and um, where the um, kind of the climate and the hierarchy and the structure of the military was contributing to um, to some of the pain uh, that maybe vet centers would be a good place for people who experience sexual trauma in the military to come for service and um, and then in 2004 they expanded again we had um, the families of people who were dying on active duty, um, who were needing um, to have support and care. And all along, vet centers had um, kind of distinguished themselves as being a place where not only did we take care of the warriors, but we also supported their families. And so um, we, we understood about families and trauma work is grief work. And, um, and so we understood about loss. And they said, let's let's send these gold star families also to the vet centers to receive mm -hmm. um, counseling for um, for for the loss of their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's there have been some other expansions as well, but um, but essentially that basic umbrella of people who have um, served their country um, in a time of conflict, or um, their families and um, and the families of people who died on active duty and sexual trauma survivors. That's kind of our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And um, and what we do is um, we provide this environment where people can come and be with their peers and um, and get individual counseling, get group counseling, get family counseling, whatever um, whatever's gonna help support them in their readjustment. Mm -hmm. And that's our, our kind of our subtitle um, is Vet Centers, our readjustment counseling centers. Readjustment. <clears throat> So, um, so another really great thing about being VA but not being VA is um, is that there's um, there's a, a, a lot fewer layers of um, of management, and we're able to be really flexible and meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. We're also because we're not um, a 
typical mental health clinic with um, with a lot of restrictions around um, JCO and certification and all of that. We're just seeing people for readjustment, whether they have a diagnosis or not. Mm -hmm. That also gives us the flexibility to um, to do things that might be less conventional, as long as they're um, the things that our veterans are wanting to do, um, and that we have some experience with ourselves. Um, I'm I'm a veteran. I'm an Air Force veteran, and mm -hmm. I served as a Korean linguist um, for five and a half years. So that meant tours in Korea, Korea, and Korea. <laughs> um, <laughs> My, uh, my dad is a Navy veteran um, of Vietnam, and my grandmother um, was a, a WAVE, a, a Navy veteran of World War II. Mm -hmm. My grandfather um, wasn't able to go because of flat feet, of all things. And he, he said oh, yeah. he, gave his, yeah, he gave the Navy the best years of his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I come to the Vet Center as a person who um, who has served. Um, my my first husband um, was a uh, was a, a U two pilot, and um, so I've served. I've been married to somebody who is deployed and getting shot at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've um, I'm you know my my dad. I grew up with my dad and his experiences, which he never spoke about, mm -hmm. and um, and you know this kind of sense of being. Um, connected in a lot of different ways uh, with the veteran community. Um, so I started working for the vet centers in 2004. Mm -hmm. And um, we've offered a lot of kind of non, um, non-traditional sort of programming or um, uh, adjunct or um, lots of words for it. Um, I, came, I came to the work from a volunteer position as a music pr practitioner with um, a, with hospice, um, playing the harp for people at end of life. Yes. And I wanted my my career to be more like my volunteer work. And one of my harp students was a social worker and she said, you know, you might try social work. And the next thing you know, mm -hmm. here I am. Mm -hmm. um, so music was immediately part of the work that I did with clients. Um, we had drum circles, we had, mm -hmm. we've had uh, a kayaking group, we've had uh, music making groups, um, you name it. But um, in 2008, um, no, eight years ago, in 2000, 2014, I had a head injury um, playing roller derby and I wasn't able to work for a year and a half. Um, thought I was not going to be able to come back to my job, actually. And while I was out on leave, um, we hired somebody who asked, um, if I come do this job, if I come work for your agency, will I be allowed to do art journaling with the clients? Because I would really love to do art journaling with the clients. And we were like, can you? <laughs> no, please do. Uh, <laughs> so um, Amber Walker is her name. And she um, she was on our staff for just a few years. But those few years, um, I got to be her, I'm, I'm going to put it in air quotes, co-facilitator. But really what I was, was a person who was recovering from a head injury, who had trouble being in a group setting because of that injury, who really loved to do art. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I would help her set up, I would help her clean up, and, um, and I, you know, I'd help her document what was happening. But mostly I was modeling what it was to be mm -hmm. a client in this process where you're creating art because it's wonderful and it makes you feel like you're coming alive. Mm -hmm. And um, and Amber eventually um, went into private practice and the art group that um, she started and then I joined and helped to foster has now expanded into this um, full blown art program that we offer at our vet center. And that a lot of other vet centers are now really interested in and um, duplicating in lots of different ways throughout the country. That was a really long answer to that question. It was amazing though. <laughs> That's a it's a super long journey to come to this point. That's an mm -hmm. interesting timeline to think about how it starts off with one section uh, of the the military, and then there's they keep saying why not? Why not have more? Why not? Why not? And I I love that question because why not give someone an art journal? Why not um, have them see if they can make music and see what it feels like? And I feel like art art is one of those why nots. Like why at least for me. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do it? Why, but why of course. 
<laughs> I, of course, we could dive into why people don't, but that's not what we're here to do right now. So um, explain what ha what has happened to groups of people that have come in. Um, give us an example of something that you have done and the, the shift that you have seen um, within the group, within the individual, within yourself, et cetera. Yeah, so um, there's um, one, one of the first big projects that we did together um, as um, clinicians and, and these groups of, um, of veterans and family members um, was around um, the number 22. And if you're in the veteran community, you recognize 22 is the number of US veterans who commit suicide each day. And that number has come down um, it, like between 20 and 21 um, and inching lower some years. I mean, it has a lot to do with counting too, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter what the number is, um, mm -hmm. it's too high. Perfect. And um, and so we did um, we did a project where mm -hmm. uh, we were doing um, Zen doodling with um, with clients in, in group, and um, I was I was invited by um, another vet center director um, to to join her um, um, in 22 Ruck, which is you march 22 miles with 22 pounds on your back oh. to bring attention to this issue. Oh, right. wow. And um, she's an army veteran and I'm an Air, Fa Air Force veteran. And there's a little bit of, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, <laughs> oh, I can't is think of it, but is it competition? Is competition. It, are you guys competitive? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's competitive. Oh. I, I, I can't think of the exact word I want, but anyway, um, yeah, we're competitive. And I wasn't about to let the army veteran show me up. So I said, yes, I will do this. And um, and I came back to the vet center and I said um, to the, the clients and, and to the team, does anybody else want to participate? Because we could do it as a relay, you know, where you take sections. And ultimately, everyone agreed that they really wanted to do something to help save other veterans. Oh. Because they get it. Mm -hmm. Right. Some of them, some of our clients, many of our clients have been there. Mm -hmm. And um, and they get what that's about. Oh. And um and so they were like, yeah, I want to do something, but I can't do that for whatever reason, you know, mostly medical issues, but I also it was hours away, lots of things. So, um, so I said, well, let's do something else then. And, um, and we put our heads together and we came up with this idea and we traced the outlines of 22 sets of feet, all veterans mm -hmm. at the position of attention, which, um, in feet is like this. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we filled those 22 pairs of feet with, um, with Zen doodles oh. and, um, and they're beautiful. And mm -hmm. they're on um, 12 by 12 pieces of, um, of cardstock. And, um, and then we, um, we, we framed them and we put them up. Like when you, um, we've, we've since moved locations, but when you moved it, in, walked into our vet center, that's what you saw was this mm -hmm. um, wall with 22 um, sets of feet hanging there. And um, and it was a, a way then for um, for them to feel like there was something that they could do to um, identify as caring about it, but also to support um, to support activism and awareness and and get the word out there. Um, a, another really wonderful project um, that we did at the holiday season, like what one of the things that we know about suicide is that suicide is about loneliness and isolation and feeling like you're not included and military service is about camaraderie and service mm -hmm. and togetherness mm -hmm. and and so um how do you how do you help people with loneliness um during a time when we're all having to be physically separate from one another so it, um at the holidays last year what we did was um in our art group um, I invited people to um, create a, a piece of art, um, as many as they liked, to use in um, in holiday cards. Hmm. And I think we we got a lot of designs. I don't remember how many, but it's a lot. I have a photo, and you you can see one of every design. And um, and we printed them all off, and we put them on um, on cardstock with a really nice sentiment inside that talked about togetherness and about missing hmm. one another. 
because mm -hmm. this is a key part of vet centers is being together. It's it's a place that you come for counseling, but it's also a place that you come because you feel like you belong. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we um, we printed off one for every one of our clients, and um, and we um, then the counselors sent them um, to their individual um, clients on their caseloads. But we got a card out from this group of folks in the art group to it. everybody on our vet center um, service, including um, some folks that had, you know, maybe closed out or discontinued service recently. But we wanted to make sure that they knew that we were thinking of them. Um, so it was, it was wonderful all around. Yeah, I love it. Um, first of all, I have to, I love what you're doing. And it's amazing. My dad was a World War II veteran with mm -hmm. extreme post-traumatic stress disorder. He wouldn't talk about it. And I wish that he had a vet center because we just didn't know, do you know what I mean? And he would never reveal, so I honor what you're doing. But I would love to uh, know uh, what happened during COVID? How did you connect with people via art and that process? Would love to know that story. Yeah, so um, it presented us with a, a lot of problems, some of them that we're still trying to figure out. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, we're two years in and, um, and, and still coming up with new ways of doing things, mm -hmm. um, but in the beginning, um, we we moved to all telehealth, and um, we figured out how to use systems to do telehealth. And there was a way to do groups via telehealth. Mm -hmm. And um, and so with our art group, uh, we um, we invited them all in to participate um, in an online forum, and we um, put together we put together kits in the beginning from the stuff that we had on hand mm -hmm. and put them into bags and put them out in our entryway, our vestibule mm -hmm. and said, come by, pick them up. Mm -hmm. um, and in those kits, um, we included a couple of blank canvases for them mm -hmm. to work on at home. And we did stuff, you know, like whatever we could figure out in mm -hmm. the beginning, you know, <laughs> but yeah. go find something in your house that you think would be really fun for us all to try and draw. And right. um, you know, kind of became a little bit of a, um, a challenge. And the word I was looking for before was rivalry. Uh, <laughs> <There>. <laughs> it came to you. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, so we all gathered up stuff and we, um, we tried different, um, different mediums and we tried different ways of doing it and um i you know i was taking online classes whatever i could find for free and i'd come back and i'd say oh we did this cool thing with gesture drawing here's how you do it and we would do gesture drawings of nice. random things in our homes but then um, we were looking for some way to um, to connect in a bigger way mm -hmm. and um and what we did was we we put two sets of canvases in our entryway, an A set and a B set. Oh. And when folks came um, into town, we'd have them stop by the vet center and this week pick up an A canvas. And then they would have their A canvas mm -hmm. and we would um, have some kind of a challenge of what mm -hmm. to put on the canvas. Um, words about what it's like for you right now. Mm. in cool colors oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know they do that mm -hmm. or um or a shape or a repeating pattern or um <laughs> get paint on your hand and smack it on the canvas yeah. like you know yeah. just a different thing each mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. and they would do that thing and then they would come back and they would drop off their a canvas and they'd pick up a random b canvas cool. and in this way we were able to cycle those canvases um through the um through the entire group Oh, we wow. had to have two sets because if we only had one set, inevitably there would be somebody who showed up and there would be no new canvas, just mm -hmm. the one that they had already worked on. Mm -hmm. So we did this for weeks, months, actually. And mm -hmm. um, last, late last spring, early summer, when we started to um, open up, when we had that kind of break, mm -hmm. uh, we could meet outdoors. And um, I'm up here in Bangor, Maine. So mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of limitations about when you can meet and do art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, it's like oh. <laughs> <Right. laughs> today it's a little chilly um mm -hmm. to to be making art outside um and in a couple more weeks we'll have the black fly hatch and then um you, you can't be making art outside because you'll get eaten alive oh, <laughs> oh man then, so there's a, there's you know there's a lot of limitations but we had this period of beautiful weather and um and a reduction in the number of COVID cases and um and this you know yes you can meet outside mm -hmm. so we did and we lined up all of those canvases and um 
in our groups, in our um, in almost all of the groups that we have at the vet center, at the beginning and end, pre-COVID, everyone would stand in a circle and hold hands, mm. and um, they would say, "We can do together what I can't do alone." Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. wow! And um, and so we looked at these canvases and we said, um, "Let's spell something out with them," mm. and we decided on the word "together," mm -hmm. and um, we had we had enough. Um, client participants and um, and facilitators to spell out together, and we, you know, we sort of looked at them and, and said, okay, well, you know, that one already looks a little bit like an O, uh -huh. so um, so let's who wants to do the O, and, um, and we we handed them out like that, and um, and then people worked on calming down their canvas to um, to just be that letter, Correct. and um, yeah, and and when we put them all together. Um, they, they really looked amazing. Um, and, I uh, there was, um, every year there's a, uh, the VA hosts, a, a creative arts festival, visual arts are just, um, part of it. There's performance arts mm -hmm. as well. And, um, and we had never been able to enter a group project because oh. um, there had never been a time when everybody involved was a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because we we had family members and um, and other folks as well. But this year, um, this last year we had everyone had been a veteran who had participated, and so um, we submitted that, and um, they um, they entered the. I actually I don't know how that went in the group competition. Come to to think of it, I don't know how we made out. But um, then there is a show at the main state house. Oh. And um, and we submitted this to be hung as part of the show at the State House. Beautiful. They didn't have room um, because oh. things were really limited because of the pandemic. But they did have room. Um, they they talked with um, with some other offices and the main um, humanities council, I think it is, um, reached out and said um, we can't put it in the show, but we can hang it outside the governor's office um, oh. in, in her waiting area. And nice. we're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like a good trade. Yeah. 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 And so um so it 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 went up um in mid September and um and it just came down at the beginning of March. Wow. And um and at the beginning of March we just finished a renovation that opened a new waiting room for us and um and we got them back just in time to be able to hang them in our waiting room. Wow. So when Beautiful. you walk in the door now, what you see is together. Wow. And I, I have pictures of that um, lined up to share with you. Oh, great. I have great. pictures of all of those things that we've done. Fantastic. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So wow. I have I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. okay. So, um, okay, I'll start with the first one. Uh, what are some reactions when people realize there's an art group and that they can participate in the art group? What are, you know, what do people say? Are people that are like chomping at the bit or are they a little bit like, uh, you know, it depends. Um, so, so sometimes, um, people are chomping at the bit. Um, sometimes people are referred over to us from the VA healthcare facility mm -hmm. because, um, cause they know about us over there and they're like, this is an arty one. <laughs> and, and so they'll send them over and those, those folks are like, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now please. Mm -hmm. and, um, and sometimes we have new clients come through the door and, we give them the tour and I'm, our our vet center is full of art that has been mm. created over um, over the years by our vets and we talk about that and you know we're all trying to get a read and if um if this is somebody who's um seeming excited about that we um we reel them right in mm. um a lot of times we get it oh i'm not an artist mm -hmm. and um and so then the um the fun for me personally anyway mm -hmm. is um is is to uh, have have them experience maybe in their one-on-one -on -one time with me a way of knowing that um everybody's an artist you, you never stopped mm -hmm. um you just you just grew a critic and yeah. um and, and yeah. the critics are not invited to our art group mm -hmm. <laughs> not alone yeah. So, um, so sometimes that um, that will help somebody get over um, that initial um, kind of sense of hesitation or really fear of um, of failing, especially mm. fear of failing in front of other vets, mm. um, and um, and get them in the door. Um, it, when when we can do that, then um, then the transition is really beautiful to watch. Um, 
actually, it doesn't matter who comes in the door. I mean, even our, our experienced artists, people who identify as artists who join us in our art group still come in and have, um, have transformational experiences around um, confidence, around belonging, around... Um, well, it's clearly, it's, clear, right. it's, it's clearly more about than it's, there's a lot more happening than creating than painting on a canvas. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I, and I, the second question I have for you is, um, I, I mean, I love the fact that um, you have multiple people working on the same work of art that is just right up mm -hmm. my alley. I think it, I think it, it does so much for the person working on the art and for the group making the art together, as opposed to just handing a single canvas to every single person. I mean, there's enough of, that's that's great too, if that's all you can do, and then you come together and, and talk about it. But the fact that they're they're passing the, passing the art back and forth, um, just there's just so much there. Um, and I don't even have the words for it uh, to, to describe how powerful that must be for the people experiencing it, because it, it's not about, I mean, I'm sure you have a beautiful work of art with your together series, but it's not even about that. It's about mm -hmm. how, how they're, what's happening on the inside. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that's reflected on the outside, on the art itself, but yeah, I think there's so much, so much power in that. I don't, it wasn't really a question. Sorry. I just, <laughs> Well, well, I have a question to add to that, Darren. Like, what do you feel? I know because we do something called Art Break Day where we bring strangers together and they make art together. And there's just some magic, some magic energy that happens when people create together. How would you describe that? Like when even in that project or when you have this group and even the holding the hands is almost like honoring what you guys just experienced, right? If you could yeah. like talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... When, when Amber left the vet center, we, we had a, um, a send off for her and um, we had a day of making art. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that was really the last time that we had um, a, a nice opportunity to bring non-artists in because mm -hmm. all of her clients and, um, and all of the people who enjoy being part of our vet center as, as community showed up. And there was a lot of encouraging people to try something new. We did jelly printing that day and um, and had them trace the outline of their hands on their jelly print and cut it out. And we then we put that onto a larger piece um, for her to take with her. Um, yeah, that was magic. That was absolutely magical. Um, I, it, it's really hard to find words. I mean, you know, you see people um, discover something that they didn't know. Um, yeah. able to express in a way that um, that they didn't realize was even available to them. And I, you know, that's, it's really special. Why do, you, why do you think art does that? What is it about art that makes that magic happen? This is a, I mean, I don't have the answer. I'm, I'm constantly trying to figure it out. You know, it's like, for me, sometimes it's like, because me, I don't have the words. I'm trying to explain something to you right now. And, and I can't even do it. I'm, you know, it's something that I've experienced. I've watched other people experience, um, you know, is it, is that you're tapping into something, you know, Lisa talks about that. You're tapping into something that you don't have the power to tap into unless you're actually creating something, you know, I mean, I just yeah. think it's multi, it's hard to, <clears throat> When I think of it in the context of post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a, the vast majority of people that we work with are dealing with that, right? Um, when I think of it in that context, I think about how um, the experience or experiences that have led to the PTSD in the first place, they're so huge and so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we, you know, we do a lot of treatment that has words, but, um, but the words are limiting because um, cause some of the feeling there is so much bigger mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and terrifying. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so if we take away the words and we give a way to just express feeling yeah. um, with color or shape, um, that, that takes all those limiting factors away. Um, and then if you put it on a canvas or you put it on a piece of paper, now you've given it a boundary. Boundary, nice. So, um, 
so it's, I, I think that in the context of healing from trauma, um, art becomes a way to um, to express, and it doesn't matter what the outcome is, right? It does the product doesn't matter? This isn't representational work. Um, so it, it's um, it's just a way of taking that stuff that um, that you have strong mixed feelings about, and I'm um, being able to express in um, in some way that doesn't require you to figure out. You know, that's the beauty of it. You don't have to figure it out, right? You just it works. Right. Yeah. You don't have to have, you don't have to have an answer. It's not about it's not about finding an answer. It's about right. getting something that is almost stuck kind of from the inside out. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. um or um if not from the inside out, like out out, um at least um on the inside moved and shifted. Mm. And I love you know, the other piece of it is that um when we're um when we're creative when we're compassionate then um then we're you know we're leading with the part that is our essence it's you know who we are um mm -hmm. at, at, at our core mm -hmm. and um and so <laughs> just by the doing of that we're um we're inviting movement away from being um driven by the part of us that's suffering toward being um in alignment with um you know with our soul with with who we are and um and so I, I think that's really important too when i go back to my my head injury and how i used art like i hadn't been a visual artist um i have a degree in theater i play the harp my mother um is a, a retired visual artist and she's mm. a phenomenal artist and so I did not want to do visual art because <laughs> I was never going to be that good. But when I had my head injury, I couldn't play my harp. And um, I, I couldn't, I, you aren't allowed to look at any screens. So like I was very limited um, and I was accustomed to doing all the things. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what I could do for about 10 or 15 minutes before I would get sick is I could doodle. Hmm. And I started to make mandalas um, mm -hmm. on little cards, little three and a half inch square cards. And the re repetition um, of of marks, like, again, it didn't matter. But if I repeated the marks, they looked pleasing. Hmm. And then later in the day, I'd go and color them in. And, um, and it would feel at the end of the day like it wasn't a complete waste. I have this little mandala that I made. Hmm. And now I have a, a portfolio of them in two Ziploc bags. <laughs> My fancy portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, but the um, the repetition and the symmetry was organizing at a time when I felt really disorganized. Yeah. So yeah. I, I I think for me that's um, that's also a part is that um, that making art can be a process of organizing something that feels really messy. I love, I just want to highlight, I love what you said about like, you can express yourself on a piece of paper or a canvas. And that's a boundary of that emotion that you was just so overwhelming that or so scary that you want didn't could, you know, didn't want to face. And then I love that you said about um, touching your essence. It's like your essence is revealed. And then I love about what you just said that you said, it's like, um, it, it takes all these things that make you these fragments that make you then feel whole. But mm -hmm. To surmise, I mean, you said so much about, you know, our theme, art is a lifeline. If you were just to talk about that, um, I mean, art is a lifeline. I mean, just kind of surmise that in your world and, and what you do for uh, the veterans. Um, for the veterans, um, the experience is, um, has been one of life or death, hmm. right? that um that service that um that service in the in the war zone is about life or death w whether or not um you actually experience a life or death situation you were in a place where um there's a good chance that your number is going to be up or the person next to you um and and then when you're not serving in that that unit in that group anymore um and you're in the civilian world there's this kind of well I mean, this doesn't matter as much because it's not life or death. Uh, mm, wow. Um, yeah, I'm, and and so um, I think 
you get a lifeline wise, there's um, there's that sense of making a difference, of of mattering, of being a part of a, a unit again. Um, you know, in, in the work that we're doing here, it's really you know being part of a group, being part of a um, a group of people doing a thing, creating something together, and um, and it can be um, a creation rather than a destruction. Mm. Oh, wow! Right. So, um, I if I if I had a dollar for every veteran that I'd met in my career who said the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, fill in the blank. <laughs> taught me how to um, how to kill and they taught me how to fight but they didn't unteach me and I don't Ooh. know what to do now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah wow so here's an opportunity to do something that's creative create to make something instead of destroy and mm -hmm. I think that's really from my perspective that's wow really holy moly and we're gonna end the conversation on that oh <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful i can't yeah. i don't think i can talk anymore so <laughs> thank you so much for mm -hmm. that i really yeah. appreciate that definitely should talk to you again um <laughs> what you're doing is amazing so thank you for sharing your time and all that stuff <laughs> thanks everybody thank you Holding Thank the tears you. back here. <laughs> <laughs>